people in northern Finland were treated to a, the sight of a fireball lighting up the sky recently. And here's video that showed the moment the meteor turned night into day in over Arctic Finland. No one has yet found the space rock where it landed yet. So let's check in with National Geographic astronomy columnist Andrew Fizekas, who's in Montreal today. Andrew, good to see you. What more can you tell us about this? Well, this was quite an event, uh, and uh, the, you know, this is what we're looking at is what's considered a, a fireball or bolide by astronomers. It's an unusually bright meteor. Most meteors that we see, and by the way, we're we're going through a meteor shower now called the Leonid meteor shower, where you can see ten to twenty shooting stars per hour uh, this weekend. And what happened on Thursday night was a uh, a very large, uh, brilliant event occurred in the evening skies over northern Finland. It was captured on. Uh, on a webcam that's designed to look for northern lights, just to show people northern lights on the internet. And by just by chance, this this web camera uh, really uh, recorded this beautiful long trail, brilliant trail of a of a of a, um, a meteor, and it lit up the entire sky with the, the equivalent of a hundred full moons, the brilliance of a hundred full moons for a few seconds. You can yeah. see that on the on the footage, which we're showing and, viewers right now, Andrew. Yeah, and it's absolutely so. This was like a double whammy on the web, webcam. You could see beautiful uh, auroras, and then on top of this, this massive, brilliant event. And uh, calculations right now showcase that this was probably uh, a hundred kilogram stone. Oh, so this is something that's about, about the size of pounds. Yeah, so something maybe the size of a of a refrigerator. Um, and uh, just to put that into perspective, the one that fell over uh, Siberia back in February of 2013, which made a lot of headlines and caused mm -hmm. over a thousand uh, injuries in a small city below the explosion, that one was the size of a semi truck. Uh -huh. uh, so this was a much smaller event, but it showcases it's very brilliant. And also what's interesting is that scientists are now trying to triangulate from the, the webcam footage where exactly there might have been fragments that have survived the the, the fall. And so the problem is that they only have about four, uh, three, four hours of daylight this time of the year in northern uh, Norway. Uh, mm -hmm. So they may have to wait until springtime to go and, and, and do a search. Oh, it's very interesting. Well, stay tuned to that. Uh, before we let you go, Andrew, I want to talk about this. Uh, this week, the scientists and artists have beamed up a message to a nearby potentially habitable planet. Why did they do this? Well, this is this is an effort by a, um, a small community of scientists to actually actively try to communicate with any potential advanced civilization, alien civilization out in the cosmos. They beamed a message late last month from a 30 meter wide uh, antenna, a message in binary code showcasing uh, some of our uh, some of our uh, knowledge of of human knowledge out into space. It's more of a symbolic gesture to a. a uh, a planetary system 12 light years away where we think there's a planet that might be habitable. And uh, this is really just a, a, a showcase, again, of our abilities of, of, of communicating with the cosmos. And it's controversial in some, some circles because we think that, you know, maybe it's not a good idea, some, some scientists say, to announce our, <clears throat> our presence in the universe mm -hmm. to advanced civilizations. And perhaps we should be listening rather than than actively communicating. But I think this is going to generate a conversation in the scientific community of really what strategy we should be looking at in terms of communicating mm -hmm. potentially with any advanced civilization in the cosmos, if there are any. Well, I always enjoy our conversations, as I know our viewers do too. Each week, every Sunday, astronomy columnist with National Geographic, Andrew Fizekas. Good to see you, my friend. Clear skies.